Hey guys, okay, so today we're gonna talk about Big Mouth Blues by Dana Lynn Donovan. Get a look at that cover there, looks really good, right? So, nope, it's moving. Ugh. Sorry guys, having some technical difficulties today. Um, so, Big Mouth Blues is about Casey Dalton. Um, in the book, she's a 14 year old girl. Uh, who lives in an abusive home. Her father is a abusive alcoholic, but he only hits Casey. Um, Casey is, according to him, the root of all of his problems. Everything is her fault. Uh, his life is the way it is because of her. Um, and Casey doesn't understand what she's done wrong. All she knows is that she has to try to prevent him from yelling at her, prevent him from hitting her, and she has to protect her twin little sisters. Um, her father does not hit her in front of her mother, so her mother thinks the hitting has stopped. Uh, he, she walked in on him beating her when Casey was 13, packed Casey and the twins up, went to her mother's house, refused to have anything to do with him, um, but unfortunately, she struggled to support herself and the girl. She was working two jobs. Her car got repossessed. And she, and of course, her mom kept trying to convince her to go back to him. And, and she kind of started talking to him again. And he made promises he was never going to do it again. Nothing like that would ever happen ever, ever again. You know, he would never lay another hand on Casey. And he was in AA. And he was clean and sober. And he'd been sober for months. And he promised he would change. And so she believed him. She took the girls back home. He bought Casey a dog. Um, his older brother, Billy, uh, breeds dogs. And he bought Casey, got Casey one of the puppies, um, Levi a boxer. Levi is important to the story, so remember him. Um, Levi is very protective of Casey. And he barks and growls anytime Mason comes near her. Um, Mason is very, very, like, th he's repeating a cycle. His dad was abusive. Uh, he had six brothers. He's the youngest. And his dad beat all of them, blamed all of them for his problems, um, for not having money. They, him and his wife wanted a daughter and kept having boys. Um, of all of his brothers, Mason's favorite is Billy, his oldest brother. Um, and Billy is who Casey calls when they need help. Um, and Mason fell off the wagon when his mother died, uh, five months prior to when the story starts. And he started drinking again and uh he drank a lot uh right he disappeared for about a week right after her funeral and billy had to go find him um he and he hadn't hasn't hit casey yet uh in those five months it's it's more of a lot of yelling a lot of screaming uh casey got in trouble uh casey and her best friend maxine had snuck out one night they told um their parents they were at each other's houses snuck out to a college party uh, ended up um, going with these two boys for a joy ride in a Mercedes Benz that they didn't find out till later was stolen. Um, thankfully, the cops showed up just in time. The boys had started to force themselves on them. And um, just as this was happening, the cops pulled up because the car was stolen. The boys were arrested. The girl's parents were called and they were grounded for almost the entire summer, like two whole months grounded. Um, Mason went so far as to empty out Casey's room entirely, left only her mattress on the floor for her to sleep on, basically told her that she was ungrateful and that she didn't deserve anything she had. Um, she did sneak out once while she was uh, grounded to go to visit Maxine so her and Max could talk. Uh, Maxine is her best friend, Maxine Jameson. She's rich. Her parents, her dad's a lawyer. Her, um, her mom is a, like, a society type. Um, they are, they're very well off. They have a very nice house. And Maxine has an older brother, Wade, that Casey has been crushing on for years, like, almost her entire life. Um, the way that Casey's mom described it is that as soon as her and Wade met, it was, like, an instant connection. And Casey was, like, two. Uh... But Max and Casey are thick as thieves. They're really good friends. Max has an older sister, Emily, who does not like Casey, has never liked Casey. Um, and usually Max and, and Casey will gang up on Emily. Um, but Emily or Casey senses that there's like a change uh, in their relationship. Emily and, and Max are closer than they were before the, the two-month grounding. And Casey is worried that... Emily is saying things bad about Ma about her behind her back to Max. Um, but Max mentions uh, a boy 
that she really likes and another boy that Casey had kissed at the end of the school year uh, on a dare because Casey never turns down a dare and uh, so Max um, had mentioned that they were gonna go to the movie so there was a whole a whole like planning they were gonna go to the movies the following week with these two boys um, but Casey was really wishing that it was Wade um, and Wade is, is hanging out with this girl, Kimberly, and Casey's super jealous of Kimberly because Kimberly's like this perfect blonde, you know, with lipstick and makeup, and Casey's just like, I wish he would notice me. So Wade and Max come over to help Casey move all of her stuff back into her room. Um, and her dad's angry. He, he gets mad about something, and he's being really, like, Max tries to intervene, tries to, like, interrupt when he's, you know, yelling at her. Um, and he makes her leave. Uh, Wade had been there uh, helping and him and Max had kind of had a moment where Max seriously thought that like he was going to kiss her or something and he took off like a bat out of hell like oh my gosh. And so Ma uh, uh, Casey worried that she had done something wrong and he spent the whole next week like avoiding her. She went over to Max's house almost every evening uh, before her dad got home um, just because his anger was really building like he beat their neighbor in chess which he hadn't been able to do for like two years uh beat her, their neighbor in chess and it put him in a really good mood and that good mood soured super quick as he drank more um casey in this time frame uh, afraid of her father wanting to numb herself did turn to alcohol uh, she drank one of his um jack daniels and it made her sick and she puked um, she drank some of the sherry at Maxine's house uh, when her mom had cooked dinner for them. She taught the girls how to call her on the phone, told them to hide under the bed if daddy ever got really mad, and to call her. And so she was over at Max's staying for dinner. Ma um, Max and Emily ganged up on her and she was she was feeling really, you know, she had lashed out and she was feeling really bad. She still felt guilty about what they called the great Casey caper. Um, and she kept apologizing to Max and she just felt like a broken record at that point. And, uh, the phone rang and Wade said it was for her and it ended up being one of the twins calling her, telling her that daddy was mad. She needed to come home. So Wade drove her home Well, she gets there and her dad's not there, but her room is a mess. Apparently he lost his job. He didn't get along with his boss. He came home and upon discovering that Casey wasn't there, he tore her room apart, smashed her stuff. And her mom was in the room crying, trying to put things away, um, apologized to Casey, told her that she would put stuff away. She wanted to clean it up, sent Casey back to Max's, literally told her, don't be here when he gets home. You need to go to Max's. It's not So Casey gets into Wade's car and she calls Uncle Billy and leaves him a voicemail. And then he takes Wade, you know, starts to take her back to his place. And she says, I don't want to go back yet. I just need some time. They stop, they park, they get to talking. And Casey reveals to him that she's in love with him. And at this point, like, he tries to explain that him and Kimberly are just hanging out. Like, it's nothing serious. Um, and he tells her that he loves her too as a sister. And that crushes Max literally breaks her heart like she just she doesn't know what else to do and she gets really upset uh demands that he takes her home and he tries to tell her no you don't know and, she, and she's like no I need to I, I want to go home I need to be there I don't want to go back to your house so he takes her home um and Uncle Billy's there when she gets there he checks on her make sure she's okay uh tells her make sure that she knows that none of this is her fault and so Max has, or Casey has to ask him, she's like, Uncle Billy, how is it that you broke the cycle? Uh, you know, cause he tries to explain how their grandpa was, how her grandpa was towards the boys. And, and he tells her, he said, I woke up one day and I just decided that I didn't want to be like that. He was like, it was a decision that I consciously had to make. And Casey doesn't really understand. Like it doesn't make any sense to her. She goes to bed. She can't sleep. She sneaks out of the room into her dad's den. She spills his um, ashtray of cigarette butts on his floor, finds his bottle of Jack, pours herself a Jack and Sprite, drinks like four of them and passes out on the floor of his den. Um, when she wakes up, she's hung over, super sick, pa uh, pukes in his, in his toilet, uh, takes some aspirin and goes back to her room. And she's getting back into her room. Um, her One of her little sisters comes in and starts bothering her. And she's got a pounding headache and she feels miserable. 
and she keeps trying to get the the sister to go away like just go away just leave me alone just and the sister keeps bugging her bugging her bugging her and and Casey's running late like she needs to leave she's supposed to meet Max for the movies and she finally screams at her little sister and basically calls her names acts like Mason and the the sister gets this look of fright on her face and then she gets mad at her and says I hate you you know yells at her and Casey wants to apologize she wants to you know say explain herself but she doesn't know how um and so then the twins are talking to her her mom takes them to her grandma's place um and they're not talking to her um and then her mom comes back and Casey's trying to leave like and her Max calls um, and the excuse that Casey gave her mom when she came back the night before instead of going to Max's was that Max got sick and of course the excuse that Wade gave everybody when he took Casey home was that one of the kids was sick and so of course when her mom talks to Max and finds out that Max wasn't sick and Max finds out that the kids weren't sick um, it, it kind of like spirals but Casey's dad comes home and her mom wants her to leave so she distracts Mason so that Casey can slip out and Casey uh, rides her bike all the way to the movie theater where the boys are already there emily is there with a skis ball boyfriend who's like a druggie and basically just all over emily like he's really disgusting and the boys and max uh bet uh casey to kiss tucker the boy she kissed before and so she tries to kiss him and it's not the same it's not wade so she's not really feeling the spark he's a good kisser and she like enjoys it but not in the way that she thinks she would enjoy it with wade when all of a sudden she's pulled away from behind to find Wade standing there with Emily in one hand, Casey in the other, and he's asking her what she's doing. Um, the skis ball boyfriend's missing, and um, and her and the skis ball boyfriend had kind of had like a, some words before the makeout session started. You know, she he said he recognized her, and she's like, "Oh yeah, my sisters are in your sister's ballet class," and he goes, "Oh yeah, your sister kicked mine," and and he kind of gives her this look like he's gonna get back at her for it, and. Um, so basically Wade tells them all they need to stop and she's upset because Wade's there with Kimberly and he knows how she feels and he still brought Kimberly to the movies anyways and it really, really bothers her. And so she goes, they go into the movie theater and the other boy, uh, walks up to her and this is the boy that Maxine really likes. Like Maxine has a crush on him and you know checks on her make sure she's okay reveals to her that he's always liked her and his buddy tucker has always liked maxine and that he really would like to be the one to kiss her instead of tucker and she kind of tries to put him off no i'm not that kind of girl i'm not going to do that to max she really likes you and he goes like but i really like you and he kisses her anyways and all she can think about is what the boy in the car said to her and so she like pushes him away tells him no but it's too late max has already seen and emily of course is in the background egging her on basically telling max what a betrayer that casey is and how awful casey is and casey just loses it like just overwhelmed with her father and wade and the boy brent i think his name was brent i want to say brent she flips out and she tells Max, she says, it must be nice to have a perfect life. You don't have to go home to a war zone every night. And of course, Max is like, well, I know you're done. He doesn't yell at me. He beats me. And like just reveals all of her secrets, all of them. And Max is in shock, like drop, like just looks at her completely in shock. Wade's paler than pale. Um, Emily is even shocked. Like, and she go, she shoves the ticket the movie ticket back at maxine and says i guess i don't need this and runs out of the theater well she gets out to the bike rack her tires are slashed and she's like okay skeezy boyfriend apparently got his revenge on me so i have to go home i have to run home so she runs it's like eight miles to her place she runs um it's raining pouring down rain uh she gets down the road and she see her phone keeps ringing she doesn't usually use her cell phone her dad takes it away a lot and she's not allowed to use it for anything besides like emergencies so her phone keeps ringing she's pretty sure it's max or wade she doesn't want to talk to either one of them um but then she sees some car headlights and this car speeds past her she doesn't think anything about it um she sees another set of car headlights and it's wade's cutlass and she hops in without even looking because of course wade would come for her in the pouring rain right and the car takes off and then the voice that speaks is not Wade's and she looks and it's skeezy boyfriend and he's basically like ticked off at her and she's already bent down and picked up some napkins to wipe off her face and found a bag of powder which he then grabs and puts into his 
um, pocket and she realizes that he hot wired the car and stole it and she tries to like convince him to let her off like pull over let me out kind of thing and he's refusing um, at, she finally ends up having to to jump out of the car he slows down for a turn she shoves the door open and she jumps out he pulls a couple of hairs out of her head which really hurts but she does manage to make it out of the car um, and rolls and when she she hits her head and she hits her head hard and when she reaches up to touch the bump she almost passes out from it so probably has a concussion um, she finally stands up looks around realizes she's in the park and this is Levi her dog's favorite park um, back when her dad you know apologized and said he would never do it again he bought her a puppy and Levi has always been her protector um, their neighbor Mr. Crane the one her dad plays chess against hates Levi and he doesn't like Casey very much either and he keeps letting Levi loose and every time he lets Levi out of their yard Levi ends up at this park so Casey's glad to see that she was heading in the right direction she's almost home um, her phone rings again and she answers this time because she knows she's in trouble and it's Wade and he's you know breathing hard where are you and she tells him the skeezy boyfriend took his car um, that she's at the park that she needs him because she fell she's hurt and he tells her that he's almost he's halfway there he's 15 minutes away wait for him and she starts to pass out like her phone falls from her hand she starts to see like spots and then she hears Mason's voice go you thought you could get away from me and this is the final confrontation this is the big showdown right and she turns around and she's just daddy what are you doing here don't call me that what do you mean and she's super confused like her brain's already fuzzy from the from the concussion and so she's like what do you mean don't call you that and he's like I'm not your dad and it takes a minute for that to register with her and she's like what are you talking about so then he reveals he was gone for four months for training in Italy and when he came back his wife was two months pregnant um, and he, she would never tell him who the father was and he thought he could make it work. He thought he could love someone else's baby. And then the baby was born and she was colicky and he said she was, it was all her fault. She made, she made him hate her and that the way she acted was what made him not like her. And it was all her fault that he could never get his relationship with his wife back the way he wanted it. And he just it was because she was someone else's child and then she looked just like her mom with the red curls and the green eyes and so it just reminded him of what his of the affair and just totally just blaming her for everything and he you know he wore this thick leather belt that Casey was absolutely scared of because that's the belt that he liked to beat her with and so he went to take it off and he told her to come come over because he was gonna beat her and she finally decided that if this was it if he was gonna kill her she was gonna stand up for herself and that's ultimately why her mom um, never left him again because he told her he threatened her mom after she came back he said that if she ever tried to leave him again he would kill her and the kids and so Casey and her mom had been struggling to survive and he pulls out this belt, tells her to come over, and she tells him no. She finally decides that if she's going to die, she's going to go down fighting. And it ends up in this big scuffle. And, like, he lunges for her, and he trips, and he manages to kick her face with his boot. And um, she, and then he gets his hands around her throat, and he's choking her and telling her to that she's going to die. And then she hears this this sound and he the pressure goes off and Levi is there their neighbor made good on his threat had let their dog loose again Levi came straight to the park and saw her dad attacking her and attacked her dad grabbed his arm pulled her off pulled him off of her like and she's trying to talk and she can't her voice is raw and then she hears Wade's voice calling for her and she hears sirens and and then she's a you know she tells him that she loves him and and he you know tells her you know calls her freckles that's his nickname for her and apologizes so and she passes out when she wakes up oh this girl is beat to hell okay broken ribs busted face uh concussion broken arm just it's a mess and her uh, Mason had revealed to her when he was when he was screaming at her that he her mom had finally told him who the man was who she had slept with the night before and he had given him a black eye and so when she woke up and she thought at first it might have been her neighbor Mr. Crane he was a redhead like her and her mom um, and he always snuck like little kisses to her mom that you know were kind of inappropriate when he would leave after playing chess when their dad had his back turned um, and so she's always kind of like, you know, she was like, great, I have another dad. My other dad hates me. You know, that was her thought process. So she wakes up and waits there. And he's telling her, 
you know, kind of what happened. Basically, the cops showed up um, and they went to arrest her dad and he attacked the cops and it took like six of them to get him, you know, uh, subdued and put into the police car and he's got so many charges against him for attempted murder and assault and battery and assault on a police officer. He's not getting out of jail for a really long time. Um, and then her mom and Uncle Billy walk in and Uncle Billy has this huge shiner and Casey's whole world shatters. Billy is her dad and she just doesn't understand. Did he not want her? Like, if he was her dad, why did he leave her with Mason knowing that Mason was the way he was? And that's when her mom reveals that Billy didn't know either. So basically, she found out she was pregnant. Um, they had had a one-night stand. And it was one of those things where after Mason and her mom got married, he was really... They argued all the time. They fought all the time. Um, she wasn't happy. When he went to training, she thought their marriage was over. So, was like, she was done. Um, during the course of her early marriage, her and Billy had become friends because his marriage was on the rocks, too. Uh, and they had kind of bonded over them sharing, you know, having this mutual issue. And then after Mason had left her, Billy had come over to comfort her and they got to drinking. One thing led to another. They slept together. That was the night Mason decided to, or uh, Billy decided to never sleep, drink again. That's when he gave up drinking and her mom had kind of gave up drinking too at that point because of what had happened between her and Billy. And then when Mason came back and he found out she was two months pregnant, um, he convinced her that he could make it work. And they decided to tell everybody that she wasn't as pregnant as she was and that um, the baby was born early and Casey was small enough that like people believed her when she said, oh, she's just a little bit early. It's, you know, she wasn't actually due yet. She's premature. And people believed her. Um, and so then she ends up uh, she, and she looks at her, looks at Billy and Billy says, I, I never knew. She never told me. And so now her anger is directed at her mom because here was a father who she would have wanted. Like when Billy's divorce happened, all three of his boys chose to live with him instead of their mom. And so here was a dad who would have wanted her and who would have taken care of her. And, and Billy told her that. He said, he told her, say, Casey, if I had known, I never would have left you with him. I would have taken you. And her mom's crying and she starts freaking out, like screaming, yelling at her mom, telling her to leave. So the nurses ask, uh, you know, have her mom, get, have her mom and Billy leave. And Wade comes back in. Max and Emily and um, Mrs. Mom is what she calls Max's mom. Had come to visit, check on her. Uh, Mrs. Mom told her she'd be back the next day. Um, it was kind of awkward with her and Max at first, but Max apologized. By the end of the week, Max turned her into a comic book fan. They read like 172 comic books together. Um, her and Wade admitted their feelings for each other. Wade told her that the reason he had been acting so weird was because he had feelings for her, but he thought she was too young because she was only 14. He was 17. And she told him, she was like, but if it's true love, it's worth it. She was like, will you wait for me? And he said, yes. So going off from the hospital, she goes home with Max's family. She asks them if she can go home. She doesn't want to be with her mom. Her mom and the twins are living with her grandma. Uh, and so she goes home with Max and her, her friends. And uh, she has a, a discussion with Mrs. Mom at one point. And she asks her, she says, she goes, I'm just so angry at her. And she goes, aren't you? You don't. Act. And Mrs. Mom says, of course I'm angry with her with, you know, uh, Casey's mom. And Casey was like, well, you don't act like it. And she goes, you have to understand that I understand her. She said, people make mistakes and you have to see that your mom was a victim too. It wasn't just you that was a victim. Your mom was a victim of abuse as well. And she was doing the best she could with the circumstances that she had. Uh, and so Casey eventually goes to live with Billy and he like gets this whole bedroom set up for her, puts twin beds in there so Max can stay the night whenever she wants. Uh, the twins can stay the night whenever they want. And she just, he he really welcomes her into his family. The The boys love having a little sister. And they, they were already, she was already really like close to them as cousins. So they thought it was even better that she was their little sister and like absolutely adored her. Uh, and there was uh, one incident that, I, that the author did want to share with us to show the difference between Billy and Mason. Um, Max had, or Max, Casey had broken a glass. They were, she was helping him with dishes. She was drying them. She knocked a glass off the counter. It shattered. Uh, her brother, Jackson, jumped up to go get the broom and dustpan. And Billy turned to reach behind her to grab the dish towel. And she thought he was going to hit her. And she, like, flinched. And he just, this is the part that got me. Like, literally, if I hadn't been at work and I hadn't been around other people, I probably would have sobbed. Like, he stopped his hand in midair. And he was like, Casey... 
I'm never going to hit you. Do not ever think that I will ever lay a hand on you like that. And for her, that's a completely new concept. She's lived in a house for the last 14 years where being hit was a was normal. That was a commonplace thing. And here is this man who is three times her size. He's even larger than her dad. And he's not going to hit her. And she's just completely like blown away. And she's in therapy and her therapist tells her it will take her time. But that eventually she'll realize that she'll stop flinching, she'll stop flinching. Um, she, <laughs> the story ends with, and one of the things that Mrs. Mom had told her is she asked from her, she said, how do I come back from this with my mom? And she goes, sometimes it just starts with hello. And so the story ends, uh, her, Emily and Max are getting ready to go to homecoming. Emily and Casey are now sort of friends. Um, Emily apologized for everything she had done. Basically what Emily and Max had gotten so close over the summer because Max had confided in Emily what had happened in the car. Max had sworn Casey to secrecy. She wouldn't let her tell anybody that they had been almost raped. And uh, Max finally admitted to Casey that maybe they should tell somebody and maybe it would make people understand uh, what had happened to them. And so Casey was grateful that Max was finally coming uh, clean with what had gone on in that car. And so Emily was being nice. She was actually dating Max's older brother, Jackson. Um, <clears throat> he had, he had been in the, in the hospital room when Emily and her family come to visit. Emily had left the room so upset. Jackson had gone after her. They got to talking. They bonded. It was, it was kind of a thing, right? So then, uh, and Wade was being allowed to take Casey to the dance, even though they technically weren't allowed to start dating yet. Um, they were allowed to hang out. So he was taking her to the dance. She was going to go to his prom. Uh, her dad was just so excited. Billy was around. He was taking pictures of her. Um, he was telling her how much, how beautiful she was. She's wearing makeup. And he told her, said, you're already beautiful. He said, but now you're a knockout. And like, just complimenting her. And she, she gave him a hug and she said, I love you, daddy. And it was the first time she called him daddy. And it really, it brought tears to his eyes and really moved him. Well, the phone rang because, and she answered it thinking it was Wade. And, and you have to remember that in the three months since the attack, she hasn't spoken to her mom yet. She hasn't been able to. And when she answers the phone, she goes, hello. And there's silence. She goes, hello again. And finally, um, the voice says, Casey, it's me. Please don't hang up. And it's her mom. And she's stuck between like wanting to hear her mom's voice and wanting to hang up because she's still so mad at her. And her mom just starts apologizing. And she said, I, I, she said, I, I blame myself. She was like, I should have been there for you. I should have taken you away as soon as possible. She was like, it's my fault that this happened. Um, and I, I can never, I can never excuse what happened to you. And, and basically just lays it all out there. And, and she, her, and her res initial response is, I know, I, I understand. And then she sits there and she thinks about it. She realizes she's being like Mason. She's blaming her mom for something that's not her mom's fault. She's blaming her mom for something that is Mason's fault. Mason was the one who hit her. Mason was the one who screamed at her and made her feel the way he did. And and so finally she, she realizes that she needs to let go of that. So she lets go of that anger and she says, hi mom. And it just perfect ending to the book. So again, looking for a good book. Big Mouth Blues is it. I gave it five stars, highly enjoyed it. I think you would too. Happy reading. Mm -hmm.